Welcome to Monroe Live. We're here today with Sam Blestry from 3IS. I'm Tom Pruche, Director of Electrification for Monroe and Associates, and we're here today to talk about some very sophisticated electronics in the Tesla Cybertruck. Um, it is called the PCS2? Yeah, the Power Conversion System 2. So yes. it, it has a number of unique features that we'll talk about here today. Um, not the least of which is how it compares to the way Tesla used to do this. Mm -hmm. So we'll talk a little bit about that as well. Um, so right off the bat, let's go for the meat here. What's the biggest, coolest thing this thing does? Well, the first thing, you know, in terms of what this supports now is, is obviously the 48 volt architecture that's new for the Cybertruck. And one of the things that stood out to us right off the bat was that the fact that the PCS2 for the Cybertruck has actually dual DC to DC converters, which are both providing 40, independent 48 volt supplies to the mid voltage uh, electrical system in the vehicle for, as a fail safe. So if one, if one of those DC to DC converters happens to go down, the other can take over and the vehicle is still up and running. Previous versions of power conversion or DC to DC or onboard charger as this, as this device was called previously, obviously this was only going up to 16 volts but it only had a single DC to DC converter. So it would be a single point failure on the previous, uh, previous Tesla models. Right. So. And I would imagine now that, you know, this is steer by wire, 48 volt driven. Right. We have an extra emphasis on safety and yeah. redundancy. They've, in this they've case. gotten a little, uh, little religion when it comes to DFMEAs. I think, yeah, so. that's a good, good <laughs> thing for Tesla to go through. So um, that said, there's another very unique feature I heard about bi-directionality. Bi-directional charging. So yeah. we can charge as we always could, Correct. but it can also provide power to our infrastructure, our home, Correct. whatever it might yeah. be. And, and this that, would be through, through the DC fast Correct. charge connection. Correct, that is that is new for this for this version of the power conversion system, yeah. So that seems like it would be a significant amount of power that you could export depending on what this board's capable of. Right, for so sure. Do we know how much that is? Um, I think in, in far as current, I think it's around 200 amps. Wow, is what this can 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 provide. I don't know, I don't have, I don't remember the specs on on the previous version, but I believe that is up to two hundred amps. All right, and so. of course these never had the ability to do that correct. by di correct. direction. Correct. Right. So that's good. So why don't we take a look at some of the other? I'm sorry, not, I just misspoke. It's actually four hundred amps. Four hundred amps. Four hundred amps. Aha, yeah. uh -huh. yeah. that's nice. Yeah. Okay. Good. Um, why don't we take a look at the differences, and we can show a little bit of the evolution, if you will. Um, you know, here's the sort of equivalent board that had the onboard charger and the DC to DC converter integrated together. Um, I don't know if it had a name. I would imagine at Tesla they called it the PCS-1. But That's, yeah, it's funny. We never saw it termed that way in previous uh, literature, but now they have the PCS-2, so maybe internally it was. <laughs> so there's, you know, a, a minor piece of evolution that we saw between the older um, Model 3 and what would have been the Model Y S configuration yeah. that we saw. So what is that? Some smaller fuses that are probably a little bit more cost effective. Mm -hmm. um, but for the most part, it's pretty much the same between them. Right. However, look at the difference yeah. between that and this. What a difference. So a significant, significant change in design, right? For sure. Um, I think we, when we looked at it, maybe by volume, maybe 50% less. I mean, it, it was a significant, both from the standpoint of, of overall size dimensionally, as well as weight. There was a significant amount of weight that was taken out of, Very nice. of from this previous design into the, into the PCS too. So. I look at it and I see, wow, they got rid of all those big electrolytic capacitors. Right. That's kind of cool. Right. And, all right, so there's some definitely magic a, there. a new and unique uh, power supply philosophy or power supply design that they've implemented on this board, right? And we go into that in quite a lot of detail in, in, in our report, so. Transformers are a big thing. Right. Um, you know, they can be big and bulky. They can be expensive. They can be difficult to implement. They have a lot of mass and you're trying to solder them down or bolt them Absolutely. down or glue them down or whatever. And what mm -hmm. they've done here is kind of cool. Why don't you tell us about that? So they've, they've created these, um, these, they call them, I think, power, power transformers and they've implemented the power transformers by using these ferrite cores. So they use, they use the ferrite core as well as from, from the inductor side, they use actually inductors that they created with PCB traces.
for the inductors. So that is very unique design to this to this. So to just kind of give some analogy to that, there's yeah. a coil that's on the old design there. Right. It's kind of in your face here. Right. Um, it is wrapped around a ferrite. This Correct. is called a toroidal coil. Mm -hmm. um, it's big, it's bulky, it's, it's probably nowhere near as powerful as these. Right. But the important thing about that is look how big it is and how difficult it would be to manage the implementation of that compared to what is so simplified. Um, this is just a solid block of ferrite. Correct. It's even kind of loosely coupled to the board. Yeah, correct. Yeah, and, and, we've, and we've taken these off and, and done some analysis on those as well, so. Very cool. Yeah. So again, that sort of detail would be something our, our viewers would find in the report. Exactly. And one of the many reasons they should look at yeah. buying that report. As well as, you know, we've done some, some, some x-rays of the, of the board as well, so you can actually see those uh, inductors that, that, that are in, in the PCB. So yeah, there's a lot of interesting things that you'll find there. So. You know, certainly just looking at it right here, the viewers can get some idea of what is meant by that. Here they are on the traces. Right. So this is just a big coil that has been created from the copper that is part of the printed circuit board. So they create a big spiral of that. And on its own, a spiral of copper in a coil doesn't give you many Henry's, if you will, mm -hmm. but add a core to it and it becomes quite an inductor. And right. that's what these do. These ferrites are just solid blocks of ferrite material. Exactly. That, uh, um, you know, make it, you know, very low in profile mm -hmm. as well as uh, easy to implement. And I'll bet it saved them a lot of money. I'm sure it has. And I'm not sure if you can, you can see here, there's actually the, the, the DC to DC converters, the redundant ones that I was, was speaking of earlier, you can see the DC to DC one and DC to two. So these are separate and independent circuits, but they're very, they're just basically carbon copies of each other on the same board. So Tesla is very good at that, to be honest, in terms of even in their, their low voltage controllers. And you see it here in this design where they, they design a circuit and they reuse it. So obviously it makes a lot of sense. We've got the same functionality between those DC to DC converters too, so. Of course, this is from the Cybertruck. This and, is from the Cybertruck. You know, whether everyone agrees that it is or isn't, but it is a work truck and it has export power that's AC. AC so that too. you could run power tools right. and maybe you know power your house directly without special hardware as we were describing yeah. earlier. Trying to connect to the battery via DC that is going to require some infrastructure to mm -hmm. manage that and you're going to probably have to buy that from tesla right um exactly. but if it's just you know 240 volt single phase right. yeah that's a plug that you can adapt to just about anything yeah within the limits of its power capability exactly. and about how much is that power i don't remember what it is on this board to be honest Tom. i i was thinking it was somewhere north of 10 kilowatts um from yeah. having looked at it earlier but um again yeah an outlet in the bed well you've got I can yeah. plug and in there's actually and there's actually two outlets right there's an outlet right. in the bed and then there's the outlet in the passenger compartment as right. well that that's fed by this so they give you a from those inverters there's a couple 120 volt outlets in the bed along with the 240 yep and then there's more on inside the passenger yeah. compartment mm -hmm. and this little boards responsible for all of that oh, as i understand it so is. it's yeah. not just that low voltage dc system anymore no, or no, fast no. charging for that matter exactly. or even the level one and two charging it is that and so much more exactly so what else is there that's interesting about this i i see the way the heat sinks are arranged this looks like it's a rather innovative approach so we have lots of thermal interface material gap filler if you will that mm -hmm. you know couples to the Heat exchanger, this is a cold plate. You can see the coolant inlet and outlet. Um, and it's quite analogous to the way it used to be done. Yeah. I'm imagining that inside the heat exchanger, it looks very similar. Um, right. But if you take a look at the old way it was done, you can see there's some differences, um, but fundamentally very similar, we have this plastic insulator that lifts everything off of the very highly conductive heat exchanger so you don't have any short circuits happening. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, you know, the, the same sort of perimeter seal is in place. Um, similar mounting provisions as well. Very similar, yeah. So it seems logical that this would be an evolutionary path for Tesla where they could adopt this methodology for future 
offerings, much like we think will be the case with their 48 volt systems, their steer by wire systems, um, I'm sure in certain applications, rear steering, uh, and maybe even this export power. I wouldn't mind having a 240 volt outlet on my passenger car if I could do so, and they could choose to populate that part or not. Or not. Mm -hmm. So again, depopulating is a popular thing in electronics. Mm -hmm. When you have a board with this sort of sophistication and a super set of capabilities, it's not too hard to um, reduce the content of the board, leaving those as sort of placeholders, if you will, right. so you can have a common circuit board across multiple applications. However, we've seen that in other cases where there were differences, like on the um, propulsion inverters, three inverters on the vehicle, they're all identical, yet right. two completely different kinds of motors that they drive mm -hmm. and with different levels of power. Right. So they chose, rather than to decontent one inverter or another to right size it to the application, they chose economy of scale and one inverter size fits all. And yeah, we may find that as a future way they do it with this yeah. device. But there's definitely building blocks, right, of this that could be, like you said, depopulated sure. or removed, right, to save some cost. Mm -hmm. But, you know, just getting rid of the electrolytics, that's a big deal. We often find rather extraordinary means to keep these in right. place. Keep from vibration. Mm -hmm. yeah, and you that can looks see. like they learned a lesson. Yeah. See a little different, little different approach there. Maybe they had some, I don't know, maybe they had some issues. So a little more RTV here on the top to, to kind of keep these in place. Yeah, moments of inertia will drive you crazy over time. <laughs> well, there you have it. You know, pretty good rundown of some new electronics from Tesla and the Cybertruck. PCS2, as it's called. PCS2. And a lot more where that came from in our report, if you want to go yeah, there. Yeah, a lot we more, recommend it. A lot more detail that, uh, that we do get into in the report in terms of the identification of all the major silicon that's on this board. Um, like we said, x-ray photos of, 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 of the board itself and of the ferrite. So a lot more detail that, uh, that is certainly there. So. All right, very good. Well, we also want to take an opportunity to thank our uh, instrumentation partner, if you will, uh, Intrepid Controls. They were really nice to provide some hardware that was useful for the um, analysis of this vehicle. They provided us the RAD Gigastar and the RAD IO2 tools, and they've been proven as invaluable automotive engineering tools for this, especially with regard to the Ethernet analysis. Right, correct. So um, that's some, another subject that I think for viewers, a future video. they should want to see that too. <laughs> so that said, thank you Intrepid. And thank you for staying in tune.